What's up, you guys? Thank you so much for tuning in today. What a night. <laughs> Last night in Buffalo. Yes, it was a night, to say the least. The Montreal Canadiens end up losing 6-3 to three in the Prospects Challenge game versus the very talented Buffalo Sabres. But as some of you guys saw, I posted last night, I had a pretty fun night in Buffalo. I got to say, it was a really good time. And before I get into, you know, the obvious details, which some of you saw, meeting Marty St. Louis, Kent Hughes, a few others in there as well. I'm just going to get into some highlights and uh, actually, you know, including the fact that the Buffalo Sabres mascot, the famous Sabretooth, took over my camera for a second last night. So that was fun. It was actually a pretty cool night. It was a really cool night. I want to get to some footage, some close-up footage of the guys warming up, the, the Habs rookies warming up, and just some footage of the game and stuff like that. Stuff you maybe haven't seen yet. So let's get to that first before we talk about the night. Let's do this. Let's do this. This is my brother-in-law, Kevin. He's the man. He's the man. Go Canadians. <laughs> let's go, boys. All right, so let's talk about who stood out from the rookie camp last night. So many of you guys watched last night. There's almost 100,000 views just on the Canadians' YouTube channel alone from last night's game. It's it's just really cool to see. I love how into it we all are before the Canadians even take main training camp. We're so into it. We want to know all about our prospects and see how they played. And we got to see them last night. Starting right from the talk, the best player on the ice was, to me, Owen Beck of the Canadians in terms of the Canadians players anyway. And we are going to talk about the Sabres players as well. Matthew Savoie and Zach Benson put on a little bit of a show. I think the Sabres, as I mentioned before I actually went to Buffalo, I was thinking the Canadians were going to take this game with relative ease with our roster, but no, the Sabres had other plans and their, their rookies, their prospects capitalized mostly on some sloppy defensive play and some turnovers. There was a lot of two-on-ones, a lot of odd man rushes. Not not so much odd man rushes, but fast breaks the other way, whereas the Canes didn't have quite as many. And Buffalo just took advantage. Matthew Savoy had that little rebound goal, which was a good bounce, but good players make themselves good bounces, right? So it was cool to see them when, especially I thought earlier in the game, Zach Benson wasn't getting a ton of ice time. I was looking for him quite a bit. And all of a sudden, in the second and third period, he really showed up. And then they started pairing Zach Benson with 2022 first rounder, Matthew Savoie. And the pair looked really good together. Again, the best player on the ice for me last night from the Canadians was Owen Beck. And I keep mentioning every time his name comes up, but go check out my interview with Owen if you haven't seen it on this channel from earlier this year. But Owen was, even on the power play, he was making crisp passes. He had great vision out there in the offensive zone, but also defensively, there was an odd man rush coming against the Canadians and Owen Beck did everything in his power to break it up and also didn't take a penalty. He back checked hard. He broke up the play, didn't take a penalty. Whereas there was another similar player 
play in the second period where the Canadians were back checking to stop uh, Buffalo Sabres breakaway, but they did get a penalty. So you saw the difference in how Owen played it. Very smart. You really see the intelligence on display from Owen Beck. You really see the hockey mind that Owen Beck has. It's very clear. It was on display last night for me quite a bit. He's just a natural leader. He's calm, cool, collected. You hear him talking in the media and you just see everything that's pretty much a total package for a third line center for the Montreal Canadiens. And uh, I like what I saw from Owen. So what do we see from guys like Sean Farrell? Well, we saw a lot of speed, didn't see a ton of offense, but we saw Sean Farrell, you know, a guy that's uh, still young. I mean, at the end of the day, we're going to see if he's going to make the Laval rocket this year. And I think that's the plan is for him to make it. But, you know, a lot of the Canadians players, again, were just shaking off rust. This was their first game. There was a lot of nerves coming into this game. You could see how wide-eyed some of the Canadians rookies were, especially Logan Mayu. I specifically noticed it about Logan in the warmups and even throughout the game, he was really just out of his element. And a lot of the Canadians players were because they were out of their elements, right? I mean, Logan's used to being in junior hockey, being a dominant force in the OHL. And last night, that wasn't the case. He had a pretty tough night, actually. But that being said, these guys were out of their element and just taking in the full NHL experience in a smaller scale for the very first time. So it was a pretty special night for a lot of these guys. Emil Heineman was another standout. The thought did occur to me very early in the first period, just watching Emil Heineman wheel around and start getting his shot off, which he's been complimented by Logan Mayu, for example, in rookie camp already, how good of a shot that Emil Heineman has. But just the way he was maneuvering on the ice, I'm like, this guy looks ready. Emil Heineman definitely looks ready to continue with the Laval Rocket as he had a great finish to the season last year. I don't know that he's ready to make the jump to the Canadians just yet. I mean, you still got to beat out other players and ultimately to make that spot. But Emil Heineman, I don't think it's too far away. And I definitely think he's going to get some games with the Canadians at some point this season. Heineman's best known asset is his shot. He's got a wicked wrist shot. He's got good speed. He's got good elusiveness. He moves around the ice really well. He's got good skating ability. So he's got a lot of positive assets in that way and also seemed relatively defensively responsible too from what I could see. But just a guy that uh, seemed to be ready to play at this level or above it. And that means at the AHL or NHL level at some point. And he definitely stood out. I did like what I saw from Jan Meshack. Meshack was throwing the body last night. He was finishing every single check that he possibly could. If you guys noticed that about Jan Meshack, and, and that's a guy who played with the Hamilton Bulldogs, played with Arbor Jackeye. And we'll get to Florian Jackeye in a second. But I really liked what I saw in terms of a physical game from Meshack, who's not a big guy, but definitely played big. And you could see that he was ready last night. That kid was ready. He's a gamer. He competes. And I liked what I saw from Meshack. Maybe it was just me, but I, I thought Mishar was a little bit underwhelming last night. I didn't really see a ton from him. Maybe it was just the angle I had on the ice. You guys tell me if you noticed anything about Philip Mashar's game last night. I didn't see too, too much. Again, I just kind of saw him trying to get adjusted and amalgamated to the pro game by, you know, just trying to stay in a good position. He made a couple good short passes in, in small areas. So I'm not saying he played bad or anything. I just didn't see anything that particularly stood out crazy to me, but I, I just have such high hopes and expectations for Mashar. I love the way he skates. I love the way he makes plays. He's going to be a playmaker, I think, too. So that's that's one of his strongest assets. But did I see a ton of it last night? No, but that's okay. Joshua Waugh obviously scored a goal on what looked like a deflection or a rebound last night. And... Uh, <laughs> Shout out to Hockey Junkie because I made a clip after that goal from Wah here. Hey, Junkie, that was for you, Joshua Wah Wah. <laughs> Let's go. Joshua Wah played on the top line with Owen Beck and Emil Heineman, and I didn't see a ton from him again. Uh, I just don't know if it's just these guys aren't used to playing together. Owen Beck seemed to think that the three of them had good chemistry last night, but I don't know. I didn't see a ton from Joshua Wah. He's got a big body. He was noticeable out there to an extent, but was he very flashy offensively or... And in any way, not really, I didn't think, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to get better for him throughout the main camp. So hopefully he stands out a little bit more as the camp goes along here. You got to give credit to the Buffalo Sabres too. They were defending well. They, they defended the middle of the ice pretty well. They broke up a lot of plays as the Canadians were trying to create. So you got to give them credit too for the fact that they were able to shut down a lot of what the Canadians were trying to create out there. Xavier Simeonu, I don't know you, Simonu, I don't know if I'm saying his name properly. He scored early on in this game. You guys saw he had all the time and space that he could have asked for. So he sc he scored a nice snipe early on in the game and then, you know, had a pretty good game after that too. He was noticeable out there. He wheels and deals pretty good. 
I liked what I saw from him. Florian was playing with some fire. He definitely had that jack eye blood in him last night. And Arbor and Florian's mom, and I don't know if her their dad was there, but her, her their mom was there last night, just showing how proud she was of seeing Florian also now donning a Habs jersey for the first time. And Florian stood out. Florian had some good opportunities offensively. He wasn't afraid out there. He looked ready. He has size too. Definitely noticeable size from Florian. He got into some scrums after the whistles, no surprise, a couple of times. But Florian looked fearless out there, not unlike his brother Arbor. And uh, there's potential there. I definitely think that um, maybe it's still too early for Florian to quite make the jump to the AHL. I don't know, but it seems like he's going to stick with the Brantford Bulldogs this year. And, and it's not a bad thing. I think he just can elevate his game even more by developing even more so with another year in the OHL. And then next year, take a jump to the AHL with the Laval Rocket. I promised my buddy Matt, a.k.a. Hockey Junkie, I would get some good footage of him. So I definitely tried to get a lot of footage of Jack I And, uh, you know, he was noticeable out there. He definitely was. And speaking of noticeable in terms of size, John Parker Jones, I couldn't help but hear the Sabres fans sitting behind me continuously notice how massive John Parker Jones is because that guy was very, very noticeable, especially next to some smaller players, whether on the Canadians or the Sabres. But he's a monster. He kind of reminds you of Michael McCarron, hopefully, He's going to you know, have a longer career with Laval or wherever he ends up. But uh, John Parker Jones has some size. He's got that intimidation factor going for him because he's six foot seven or whatever he is. He was impossible not to notice out there for how massive he is. All right. So Logan Mayu, he looked super wide eyed in the warm up and was just kind of trying to take in the whole experience, kind of realizing, I think you kind of try to read the emotions and thoughts and feelings of these guys for what they're showing you on their faces. But with Logan, it just seemed like he was really realizing, hey, like I'm I'm getting there. I'm almost I'm almost there in terms of turning pro and the whole vibe changing of this is professional hockey now, whether it's rookies or not. You could just see on Logan's face that he was just taking in this whole new experience, like I mentioned, out of his element naturally, because this is his first taste of pro hockey, right? But it was cool to see their reactions and Logan. Got better as the night went along in the third period. Owen Beck mentioned it. There was a specific sequence where Logan brought the puck up from behind the Habs' own net, wheeled it all the way up the ice, and kind of you saw that little bit of offensive upside that Logan has from the OHL with the London Knights. You could see that he finally got a little more comfortable near the end of the game, but he had a bit of a tough night. There were goals against that were definitely when Logan was on the ice, and there were some mistakes made with him and his defense partner. Christopher Ortiz was his defense partner, and they had a bit of a tough night at times. But again, this was a rookie game, and you're just seeing these guys learn. This is the time to make mistakes and learn, learn, learn all that you can. William Trudeau had a pretty good night. He looked very poised in calm back there. He looked very calm, actually, I would say. He looked just composed, was making good passes, was making good plays, had good vision up the ice as he was coming out of the defensive zone. Looked like he had some experience behind him. You could certainly tell that Trudeau, this was a second rookie camp, right? And it's going well for him, so good for him. And, you know, you saw some potential. I don't know what's going to happen with him in terms of the long-term plan, but definitely a guy that you are got to think he's going to be on the Laval Rocket this year for sure. All right, so the other big man, David Reinbacker, the fifth overall selection from the 2023 NHL entry draft this year, the controversial pick, if you will, the one where we all freaked out about, right? Well, David Reinbacker looked pretty good last night, I have to say, for his first taste of pro hockey, I was expecting Logan Mayu to outplay him, but it was actually the opposite. I thought that David Reinbacker actually had a better night, obviously. Not that it matters about trying to compare their games in the first taste of rookie pro hockey here. No, you're not, you're not comparing these two players. But it was cool to see, again, as the night went along, Reinbacker got more comfortable. He got power play time more than once. And frankly, had some good chances to score. He actually got a point in this game. And that was fun to see. But just from an overall perspective, you could really see that David Reinbacker, as he was told by Marty St. Louis and everybody else, he was a sponge out there last night, soaking in the entire experience. You could just see it on his face. We were up close to him, obviously, by the glass. And you could just see that he was really taking it all in. And he was reading the plays, getting better throughout the night, making good plays, a lot of little chip plays, little passes, plays that maybe go a little unnoticed at times. But I noticed Grant McKegg, Made a point last night about one of the little passes he made to his D partner. And it was a simple play, but it was the right play, right? So he was doing a lot of the little things right, I thought, based on what I saw from him. Ryan Backer's skating was good. He, his puck movement was pretty decent. And he made some mistakes here and there, but he got into some good board battles. 
And frankly, like I said, for his first taste of pro hockey here on the smaller ice surface, which he's still not used to, being that he's normally used to playing in Switzerland on the bigger ice, you know, this was a good first showing for David Reinbacker. Like I said, throughout the night, he got more comfortable. By the time the third period rolled around, the guys really, some of them seemed to settle in for their first time playing pro hockey. I was happy for him and I was proud of him, frankly. So good for David Reinbacker. I love the first taste of pro hockey I got to see from him. All right, so Jacob Dobesh. This was the first taste I got to see of Jacob Dobesh from Czechia in net for the Montreal Canadiens last night. Now, mind you, there were six goals scored on him, but I got to say he was positionally sound. And you got you to blame, to me, a lot of the defensive breakdowns that the Canadians had for a lot of the goals that were scored on Jacob Dobesh. Am I excusing it? No, not necessarily, but I do think that overall, especially in the first and second period, Jacob Dobesh had some good positional saves he looked big in there. He's obviously six foot four, six foot five. The size factor is already there, but uh, his mobility was good. His compete was there. You could tell he's upset at himself for letting a couple of those goals get by him. But from an overall perspective, I think that he had a pretty decent showing based on what I saw from him. And there's definitely potential. There's definitely potential there from Dobesh. Am I convinced? based on this one little game that he's going to knock out Caden Primo of his starter job in Laval? No, I'm not. But I will say that he definitely has the ability to compete for a backup spot in Laval, or who knows? I mean, as the tournament goes along here, it could get better and better for him. We'll see what happens. But Jacob Dobesh played pretty solid overall, some really good saves, and uh, I liked what I saw. I was pleased overall. All right, so if you've stuck around this long, yes, I will tell you the story of how this night started in Buffalo. We go to Tim Hortons, and it's like those funny decisions you make where I was deciding if I wanted to get a coffee before the game. I do decide to get one. Go into Tim Hortons. My brother-in-law ended up coming in with me, and we come inside the door, and the first person to walk in behind us, Kyle Dubas. The lineup was long, so Dubas was beside me for what was a good like 15 minutes or so. I chatted him up a little bit, obviously took a picture with him. But, uh, man, the level of peace and calm that <laughs> that was around Kyle Dubas compared to what it must have been like last year and the year before, you can notice the difference there. But a nice guy, also from here in Niagara, Brock University graduate, as we know, he's propped up so huge in the sports management program over at Brock, as some people know. But, again, just a super nice guy, wished him well. The guy gets to be the president of hockey operations for the Pittsburgh Penguins, looking over the final years of Sidney Crosby and of Genny Malkin's career, trading for Eric Carlson, trying to put a good button to the end of that era for the Pittsburgh Penguins. And then I'm sure looking to help rebuild the Pittsburgh Penguins. So Kyle Dubas has a great career ahead of him. All the power to him. Then we get to the rink. And of course, one of the first people I see is Arpin Basu from The Athletic. And uh, Arpin's a great guy. I had one interview with him on this channel years ago during COVID, but I didn't even expect him to be there being that he's from Montreal. I didn't know which Montreal media were going to be there, but Arpin was there. Super nice guy. When I walked around, I saw Rob Ray and then came the delay in the third period where some stuff happened. I had no idea that the Montreal Canadian staff, the brass was going to be there whatsoever. So during this very long 20 to 25 minute delay in the third period, I go use the bathroom at the other side of the ice where there's no lineup. And all of a sudden I see Jeff Gordon. I see Jeff Gordon and I'm like, okay. And then I see Marty Lapointe, Nick Bobrov, and then I saw them. All of a sudden, just sitting there casually next to each other is Vinny LeCavalier and Marty St. Louis. Didn't end up getting a picture with Vinny because he went somewhere else. But regardless, um, I had to go interrupt actually Dan Girardi talking to Marty St. Louis, former Ranger teammates. Dan Girardi's a local Niagara guy too, now working for the Sabres, but interrupted those two politely. Asked Marty for a picture. He said, sure. I think I shook his hand and said, thanks, Marty. Have a great season. I don't know. I kind of blacked out. Then I walked away, used the bathroom, realized what just happened, kind of came back and saw that the whole staff was there. And I thought to myself, I'm like, I didn't see Kent Hughes. I'm going to go look to see if Kent Hughes is here. So I go back and then sure enough, Kent Hughes is right there. I say, Kent, can I get a picture with you? He says, sure. And I ended up having a little conversation with Kent Hughes. What a gentleman. It's still surreal. The whole thing was kind of surreal. It was sort of a happy accident, if you will during this major delay during the game and everyone was just sitting there watching the game casually all the guys i had no idea but kent hughes was a gentleman he was so nice just got to chat him up a little bit ask him a couple questions um about you know how he's enjoying the job being the general manager of the montreal canadians and it was a pleasure it was a treat it was a blessing to me to be able to run into these guys i had no idea that they were going to be there it was so much fun also, again, saw Kyle Dubas on the other side of the rink, along with Jason Spezza. There were so many, there were so many guys there. And uh, even on the way to the rink, we saw prospects from the Penguins, the Senators, 
it was it was a cool night and i just got to say that i didn't expect the night to turn out that way and despite the loss it didn't even matter in terms of this exhibition game from an overall perspective but it was really cool it was really cool it was a really good night and uh, you guys can see how happy i was to enjoy that night out together with my brother-in-law and I, and it was a great time. I hope you enjoyed this video, you guys. So thank you for watching. Enjoy the next games. Enjoy the rest of rookie camp. We'll see you in training camp next week with the Canadians. It was a blast. Thank you so much for supporting the channel, guys. You know which buttons to push if you want to do so. Thank you so much. Go Habs, go. We'll see you guys real soon.